in the caves and dens and all these places because of keeping the church together, the word of God together. And they had the risk of being killed. But they still tried to assemble. Right? That's where they have this fish sign, where they say was a sign where you could tell like we are disciples would meet. But they were on the risk of people just coming in and just sweep them up and, and just kill them. Right? But they didn't stop didn't stop them from meeting. So where these things come about to say that that God is telling you say that you must not meet and children of God should not be together. Right? And everything now is a virtual thing. A virtual, a virtual. Not understanding that there is no virtual, there is no virtual salvation. Right? There is no virtual Bible. There is no virtual eternity. There is nothing virtual about God. Everything about God is real. Okay? And so for all the people who never believed that God was real, said that he's invisible, and now they're believing in a virtual everything, virtual, virtual, right? A virtual concert. Why I must have a virtual concert? Of course, because the concert, I give me the tape. I watch it. I have a virtual concert, right? I mean, what? What am I talking about? Everything is virtual, virtual, virtual today, right? Everything is virtual, right? So the scripture tells you that the servants of God were sealed, were sealed from the children of Israel coming down to all Gentiles, every one of them, right? Even a great number that no man could number. The scripture said, after this verse 9, I beheld and lo a great number, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, right? And, and palms in their hands, a palm, a sign of victory, right? As they celebrated when the Lord was going on into Jerusalem, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, right? So, yeah, they're celebrating the victory. They all have the seal of God, the seal. Do you have the seal of God today? Right? Do you have the seal of God today? Right? Do you have the seal of God? Is your name in the Lamb's book of life? Right? There's the, the scripture said, no plague is going to befall you. No plague is going to destroy you because it's going to give his angels protection over you. Right? That's what he said. And if you believe that God is faithful, then you're right. If you don't believe that God is faithful, you're wrong, dead wrong. What he said is what he would do. Right? He promised you that he would protect you in this life. In the life to come, you're not going to need it because that won't, be, that won't, be, won't exist for you. Right? The devil can't hurt you and nothing, no evil. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne of their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. You have heard the scripture before. But these are the children of God who are sealed. Okay? They, some of them, as the Bible tell you, they were killed for the gospel. Right? And they, they didn't fear that. Okay? They assembled together. Right? Even though they know the risk of where they were killed. But they weren't killed by the plague. You understand what I'm saying to you? Okay? So, as the Bible said, and we're going to come to that, where they shed the blood of, of saints and of prophets. That's what it said. It's just what it did. Scripture said. They weren't killed by the plague. They were killed by the hand of evil men. Right? As they did. 
in those days and they still bring it even to today. Right? The scripture said that therefore I day before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more. Ah, uh, um, they shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, not any heat. Hear that? Nothing. Nothing can hurt them anymore. Nothing can hurt them anymore. Alright? Okay? For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all the tears from your eyes. Man, that's so beautiful. We're going to stop our study right there. So we have done chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Right? As I said, the seventh seal is going to become really complicated. But we have seen what the scripture said here. Right? What it says here. Now the seventh seal of should have really come down from to chapter 8 should have really been like chapter 7. Okay, so chapter 6 seal and you jump to chapter 7. But then something else comes in the middle which actually has to do with our lifetime here and what God has done to the generation in sealing his people for the kingdom. Right? Because this is not something that just happened one time. Right? This is something that happened for generations. Generations of children of God, people of God, from all kindred, nation, tongues, all of them have been sealed for the kingdom of God. Okay? And God knows who they are. And before I close, that there's that scripture there, right? In 2 Timothy 4, uh, 2, where it said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his, right? And let, oh, can we just finish with that? It said here, the, um, 2 Timothy 2, verse 19, right? Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord, of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's it. Okay? So if you believe that you have been sealed for the kingdom, if you believe that your name is in the Lamb Book of Life, that's all he's saying you have to do. Depart from iniquity. Walk in righteousness. If you, I say, because the seal, of the God has a seal. And, it, and his foundation is sure. It's right. Like, there's nothing you can do to change it. Right? And the, as the Bible said, um, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. These things were written before. Right? Your name, who you are. Remember I spoke about that with Josiah? But the prophet spoke about him. He called him by name. Right? And many people like to talk about Jeremiah or the Bible said, before I found you in the belly, I knew you. You better believe he knew him. Right? He said, I ordain you to be a prophet. I know who you are. You can't be no one else but a mouthpiece for me. Because that's the only reason why you came on this earth. But the Bible is clear, even about the wheat and the tears, that the Bible said the enemy has done this. That some of the people, some of the people, Satan has taken them over, even from the womb, and said, I want this one, I want that one, and I want this one, and I want this one. Okay? And I'm taking this one, and I'm taking this one, I'm taking this one, I'm taking this one. And God, don't fight with them over them, over them, enough, because God knows their hearts. That they will not serve him anyway. So there's no need for him to go and I say the devil, no, this is mine. Okay? Remember that st story I did in less about a bronze plucked from the fire with Joshua? But God would not allow the devil to take Joshua. He knew who he was. He said, This is a brand plucked from the fire. You're not getting him. Okay? Yes, you're not getting him. Okay? Because God knew who he was. But for the tears, you don't fight with the devil over them. You leave them to the devil. All right? And the devil has his way with them. Okay? He has his way with them. But for the wheat, no, no, no. He's not going to have his wheat. He's going to hold his wheat to himself. 
He's about to say, we'll gather the wheat in this garner. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. You see? The seal is that the Lord knows them that are his. So, when the Lord look out on the whole of this earth, and people could be, I mean, gathered by the millions in a stadium or wherever, in some march or whatever, he look in right among them and he sees exactly who they are. And believe me, if you are one of them who sealed by him, okay, angels of God will be around you. Okay? Angels of God will be around you. Okay? They're watching every step you make. Okay? And when something is going to happen, as I said to you the other day, when, when I was going to drink this thing and the, Lord, and the devil said to me, Suppose you drink this thing and it hurt you. And, and the Lord said to me, Why would you think? Why would a thought like that even come into your mind? He said, If I stop you on, on the road from walking into the, the a vehicle that was, was intended on running you down, so why do you think I'm going to allow that time to you? Okay? Look at the things I've done. You think I'm going to allow that time to you? Right? Say if you're a child of God today, or you believe, right? That you are on the foundation of Jesus Christ, right? Because the Bible tells you, as a foundation can no man lay, then that is related with Christ, right? If you're building upon the foundation of a rock, right? Then don't come and tell me about that, you'll be there fearing that a plague is going to kill you. Because I said to you, call it whatever you feel like it is, it's a plague. Okay? That's what it is. That's what it is. It's a plague. It's no different from the plagues that came in the time of Egypt. But it is actually worse. In that a time when the plague came, on the Passover night, it only took the firstborn out of each house. But this plague is set to maybe take more than just one out of each house. Right? Because as I told you, I read something recently. While these very same experts are saying that there's going to be no end to it. He said no vaccination right, is going to stop it. And it's about time the, even the liars begin to say the truth. If you understand what I mean. They've been lying to people. They, they, they know it's not going to stop it. Nothing. But that if you have the seal of God, Right? The seal of God. And so the Bible said, let everyone uh, name it the name of Christ, the power from iniquity. Walk circumspectly. Walk before your God. Walk knowing that the, the, the hour, at any hour, He will appear in glory. Walk knowing that you are the bride and you must be ready. A dawn for your husband, the bridegroom when he comes. Walk worthy of the vocation when you are called. Amen. Concentrate on Him. Meditate upon him. Amen. Keep him in focus, my God, and walk according to righteousness. Right? This is my desire for you, for myself. Right? In Jesus' name. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. There is a gross darkness, the Bible says, will come upon the people. Are you having the gross darkness today? That that the world is terrified and the church is terrified. My God, how can that be? Right? If you are called a disciple of God, how can you be terrified? Right? The Bible said, Paul said, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. In other words, we know what is ahead and what God has in store. So we persuade men that they would turn to righteousness and sin no more. Right? That they would walk in righteousness. That's why we persuade them. We are not terrified. But I was saying nothing, you should be terrified. Okay? Nothing. Right? Nothing. And knowing carefully, knowing assuredly that God is able to keep you and to deliver you. And the same God of Daniel, of Moses, you know, and Obadiah and uh, Paul and, and um, Abraham, right? And Enoch. Elijah, you know, Elijah 
special profit to me. Right? Right? And so we want to sing this song here. And the song said, He hideth my soul. Amen. I was thinking of a song to sing and uh, last night in worship.